Step and fetch it, shattered barriers and etched his name in history as the very first African-American film actor to amass a million-dollar fortune. In an era when the industry was predominantly controlled by the white population, his rise to prominence was a testament to his remarkable talents and resilience. However, it was a time when the harsh reality of racial inequality cast its shadow upon the entertainment landscape. During the 1930s, Steppen Fetchett's star burned brightest on both the silver screen and the stage. He captivated audiences with his unforgettable persona as the laziest man in the world. Yet, beneath the comedic facade, he portrayed characters that perpetuated stereotypes of slow-talking, dim-witted slaves and servants. It was a portrayal that showcased his immense skill and entertained moviegoers albeit temporarily, while amassing a substantial fortune. The tale of Step and Fetch It begins in the vibrant city of Key West, Florida, on May 30, 1902. Born as Lincoln Theodore Monroe Andrew Perry, he came into the world as the son of Joseph Perry, a Jamaican cigar maker, and Dora Monroe, a talented seamstress, Helen from Nassau. Both of his parents had embarked on a journey as immigrants from the West Indies, seeking new opportunities in the United States during the 1890s. In a twist of fate, Perry's mother harbored dreams of him becoming a dentist. With that aspiration in mind, he was taken in by an unscrupulous dentist who promised to provide him with training. However, instead of honing his dental skills, Perry found himself relegated to the task of polishing boots for his new guardian. Disheartened by this turn of events, at the tender age of 12, he made a daring escape, determined to reshape his destiny. His journey led him to the captivating world of carnivals, where he sought refuge and a chance to reinvent himself. Perry found solace in the realm of entertainment, captivating audiences with his comedic flair. As time passed, his talent blossomed, and by the age of 20, he had risen to the esteemed position of a traveling carnival show manager. It was during this time that Perry stumbled upon an opportunity that would forever shape his career. A fortuitous bet on a racehorse named Step and Fetch It resulted in a victorious outcome, and he christened himself with the stage name Step and Fetch It, an homage to his triumph and a moniker that would become synonymous with his theatrical persona. As an actor, Step and Fetch It found success by portraying characters that embodied illiteracy, dim-wittedness, and laziness. These on-stage portrayals, though controversial in their perpetuation of stereotypes, garnered him attention and acclaim. However, it is important to note that beyond the confines of the stage, Perry was a man of knowledge and intellect. In a parallel pursuit, he pursued writing for The Chicago Defender, showcasing his literary prowess alongside his acting endeavors. In the year 1927, Stepan Fetchett made a resounding impact on the film industry with his captivating performance in the movie In Old Kentucky. Alongside actress Carolyn Snowden, their on-screen romantic connection was a rarity during that era. The critics lauded his powerful portrayal, earning him a wave of positive feedback, and ultimately leading to the signing of a lucrative five-year studio contract. In 1929, Fetchett ventured into the realm of part-talkie films with his involvement in the notable production of Showboat. That same year, he played a significant role in the groundbreaking all-black musical Hearts of Dixie. As Gummy, a lazy individual residing on a cotton plantation, Stepan Fetchett's charismatic performance stole the spotlight. However, despite his talent, subsequent musical opportunities did not afford him the same level of prominence to showcase his abilities. Throughout the 1930s, Stepan Fetchett enjoyed a steady stream of work, swiftly establishing himself as one of the most renowned, cherished, and instantly recognizable black actors of his time. Yet, due to the prevailing racial climate, he was often confined to cameos and smaller featured roles. Among the 26 films he participated in from 1929 to 1935, three notable collaborations included appearances alongside Shirley Temple, most notably in Stand Up and Chair, 1935, 
as well as five films directed by the esteemed John Ford. Notably in the Ford films, including Steamboat Round the Bend 1935, Step and Fetch It played the role of the star's loyal servant and comedic sidekick, bringing his unique charm to the screen. Unwaveringly typecast as the embodiment of a demeaning stereotype known as the Ark Coon, Step and Fetch It found himself perpetually confined to the role of a tall, bald servant wearing a perpetual grin and ill-fitting, oversized clothing. This servile image eventually led to a disconnection from black audiences and drew the ire of civil rights advocates. Walter White, representing the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, criticized Fetch It's portrayal, asserting that his subservient characters reinforced racist depictions perpetuated by the white majority. The black press repeatedly denounced his involvement in perpetuating unwelcome stereotypes. By the mid-1940s, the mounting protests against his racist caricatures took a toll on his career. Additionally, his extravagant lifestyle, characterized by ownership of multiple houses, an array of cars, and the employment of numerous Chinese servants, led to the dissipation of his wealth. In 1947, the same year he starred in Miracle in Harlem, Stepin Fetchett was compelled to declare bankruptcy. During the early 1950s, Fetchett's screen presence diminished significantly, appearing in only a handful of movies, some of which were exclusively black productions. Subsequently, he vanished from the cinematic landscape for two decades. However, Personal tragedy struck with the heartbreaking loss of his son to suicide. In the late 1960s, seeking solace and spiritual renewal, he converted to the black Muslim faith. In 1970, Fetchett filed an unsuccessful defamation lawsuit against CBS, claiming that the network had utilized out-of-context clips from his work to illustrate the caricatured portrayal of black individuals in American films. In the 1970s, Step and Fetchett experienced a renaissance that revitalized his career and brought him back into the limelight. After years of being nearly forgotten, he made a triumphant return to Hollywood screens with notable roles in films like Amazing Grace, 1974, and Wan Tan Tan, The Dog Who Saved Hollywood, 1975. In 1976, the perceived slights he had faced in the past were forgiven and he received a special image award from the Hollywood branch of the NAACP. Two years later, he was honored by being inducted into the Black Filmmakers Hall of Fame in 1978. In his personal life, Stepan Fetchett had been married three times. His first marriage was to Dorothy Stevenson in 1929, and they welcomed their son, Jamajo, the following year. Unfortunately, their marriage ended in 1931. He then married Winifred Johnson in 1937, and they had a son named Donald in the subsequent year. However, their relationship also ended, leading to his third marriage to Bernice Sims in 1951. Tragically, Stepan Fetchett passed away in Woodland Hills, California, on November 19, 1984, due to pneumonia and heart failure. Over the years, film scholars began to recognize his wealth of comic talents and impeccable timing that formed the foundation of the characters he portrayed on screen. Goodbye and rest in peace, legendary comedian and film actor Stepan Fetchett. Stepan Fetchett.